So, mechanical engineers like to take things apart and then really put it back together again. Mechanical engineers try to fix their cars when it breaks down. I don't do that. I just take it to the garage. Mechanical engineers spend hours and hours in their sheds working with their electrical power tools. I don't do that. But I am a mechanical engineer. I obtained my PhD at Eindhoven University of Technology in mechanical engineering. And what I did want to do was use my creativity and really uh, design machines that would contribute to the world. So, I got the chance to develop a surgical robot for complex, minimally invasive procedures. That is, performing complex procedures through really small incisions of about one centimeter. And these small incisions provide patients with an improved um, quality of life because these incisions are so small. The robots itself would enhance the capabilities of the surgeon. And I wanted to provide more patients and surgeons with the benefits of minimally invasive surgery. That was my goal. I wanted to do something new that didn't exist yet. So my professor asked me to come up with a feminine name for this robot. And I called her Sophie. And Sophie is really a beautiful name. Of course, it also stands for something, and that is a surgeon's operating force feedback interface Eindhoven. But we'll just keep it to the short thing, Sophie. That's much better. My journey as a scientist began with defining the need for Sophie. I went on an expedition to get an understanding of this need. What, what do surgeons and uh, patients really need? So I gathered data from articles. I interviewed surgeons, and here you see an impression of a minimally invasive procedure performed with the Da Vinci surgical system, which is a much larger um, machine currently being used. I really loved observing the procedures because it gave me the... I could really see what the needs were of these patients and surgeons. And um, I need to check with my notes. <laughs> Sorry for that. So I got this information. I went back to university. And I studied it, and I found that um, to, we needed to reduce operating time, because that would give more patients and surgeons the possibility of actually using this, these benefits. And the resulting design goals to reduce this operating time were three. One, we should actually make Sophie small, so we could reach patients better. Two. Her instruments, we wanted to give her the elbow wrist in addition to the, to, the, to the wrist joint. So surgeons could work in places that are hard to reach. And the third thing is, we wanted to provide surgeons with force feedback, with a sense of touch, so they could actually feel what they're doing, and that wasn't possible before. So we got the data, we knew the need and we knew the design goals and we actually started to work on what a creative process that was. I loved it. The team and I, everyone, was eager to contribute and bring our Sophie to life. So now is the time to introduce to you Sophie. Ah, here is Sophie and as you can see, the currently used system and to the left we have Sophie. As you can see, she is much smaller than the currently used system. Here, you see me operating Sophie. I am handling the joysticks, and Sophie at the surgical table really follows the movements I am making. Sophie also measures the forces I execute. And these forces, I can feel them back again at the joysticks. This means surgeons feel what they are doing. At the instrument tips, you have the uh, elbow joint and the wrist joint. So, our little Sophie
came into being and could actually make a difference for a lot of patients and surgeons. Could make a difference, because the truth is, the truth is it needs to be proven in clinical trials, and that wasn't part of my project. But I did it, I achieved my goal, I made something new in a process of co-creation. I connected the need of healthcare with technology and this connection, Sophie, I realized with the team. In that period, I went to a birthday party. And when I entered, my friends were talking on what I had done with Sophie. And I saw this um, little boy of about eight years old and he was pulling his mom's jacket, trying to get her attention. And when he got it, he was looking at me with his big eyes and his head tilted. Mom, when I grow up, I want to build robots too. <laughs> oh, this really touched me. It really touched me. I realized Sophie and I inspired that boy. And I realized as well that something was missing. Something hit me. That boy made me look in the mirror, actually look in the mirror. I realized I wasn't proud, even though I achieved my goal. And that was because I based my image of success on what I saw around me. I had high expectations of myself. I had to master all the details, master all the technologies, just like my colleagues did on their projects. I was the only female PhD candidate in my professor's group and I based my image of success on my masculine environment. That boy was an unlikely catalyst. He made me realize I had to change my image of success into an image that fit me. But how? I figured it out. I just need to do what makes my heart sing. What really is my passion? Connect with me. <laughs> That's what I needed to do. So, bringing Sophie to life was a journey with lovely highlights, with co-creating, designing concepts, and actually building bridges between disciplines, and that made my heart sing. With this image of success in mind, I carried on with Sophie working on a business plan, trying to get her to market. Sophie was my child that I cared for day and night. I developed her and worked, for, worked on her for seven years. And I realized I was exhausted. I needed a change. I needed to, to start listening to myself and listen to my heart. So sadly, I had to let her go. I really found some caring fathers for, for her, who were my colleagues in this project and who are taking care of her now. So I had to let her go and take the experience of the things I learned with her with me. There's one thing that I would like to share with you, uh, some more that will follow. Um, I learned that to fulfill my need, I actually need to show myself, show what I love to do, show what I'm capable of. And um, if there's one thing that I'm not really comfortable with, it's selling myself, and I'm really sure that many of you can relate to that. So I found one of the things, one, one thing to, uh, to make it work for me, and that is ask and accept help and get in touch with the needs of others. So, what do other people need to help me fulfill my need? And what do I need to help others fulfill their needs? It's all about connecting the needs. You see, it's all about connecting the needs. Connecting the needs of patients and surgeons with technology connecting with my need and my image of success, and connecting with the needs of others to help them fulfill their needs. In this phase of my life, my seeker side is emerging. 
I absolutely love to be in touch with my heart and right brain and really value my scientist's left brain as well. If there's one thing I learned from my journey with Sophie, it's this. I need to live my life as a scientist and a seeker, combining my brain and my heart, because that's all who I am. Thank you.